Hey, I'm Taka YCC. Come with me. I want to show you a few of the films that uh, I've loved over the years. You don't have to, but you may as well. Well, that's Elizabeth Moss, and I haven't even seen this movie. But she's uh, got a small part in a film that I just shot in Hawaii. She's actually a pretty good actor. So this is Thomas and Mackenzie, this film Leave No Trace. Oh, it's not too deep. This is Thomas and Mackenzie, who's in Jojo Rabbit. Uh, there she is there. Look, she's a little New Zealand kid. Not in this film. This film's set in America. She's um, fabulous. You must see her. You've got to see it. Oh, this is one of my favourite films. Stalker. Fun fact, they uh, had to shoot this film twice. The, f the footage, uh, the, um, all, of the, uh, all of the dailies and, the, and everything got destroyed. By accident? Maybe not. The master director Bong and uh, one of my all-time favourite films, Memories of Murder. <laughs> From Korea, and uh, as we all know, director Bong then went on to direct um, The Firm with Tom Cruise. And uh, then he went on to direct um, Deuce Bigelow 1, 2 and 3. And now he's decided to go back to his roots and uh, make a film called Parasite. <laughs> Me and director Bong were like that. No, didn't happen, did it? Too bad. Might still happen. Excellent film. Old boy. Park Chan Wook, one of the greats. Very disturbing uh, twist in this film. Have you seen the the US version of it? Get. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Morris. Let the right one in. Young boy who's bullied a lot at school discovers a strange girl who's, um, who hasn't, doesn't have anywhere to live. Doesn't have any friends either. But she's awake all night. You know why. She's a vampire. Spoiled <laughs> it for you. Is uh, a film that Jermaine and I always loved and it inspired us a lot when we were doing what we do in the shadows. You have not done the dishes for five years. Vladislav is right. It's unacceptable to have so many bloody dishes all over this bench. But it's also an inspiration for the relationship in Jojo Rabbit. I don't think I can do this. Russ! Of course you can. Ah, oh, TV shows, guys. Oh, that's why I thought I was in the section to find uh, my favourite TV show, but... Uh, Faulty Towers from England. Faulty Towers is one of the great, all-time great comedies. Well, may I ask what you were expecting to see out of a talky hotel bedroom window? <laughs> Sydney Opera House, perhaps? The Hanging Gardens of Babylon? And um, it's not here. Come with me, guys. Come with me. Yeah, look at these comedies here. So this one here, Spinal Tap, big influence on what we do in the shadows. <laughs> Ah, here we go. Oh, look. R.I.P. Terry. Well, we must see him. We have brought presents. Oh! Gold, frankincense, ma. Well, why didn't you say he's over there? So the Monty Python was a thing that I would watch a lot when I was young. Definitely this, this, this film here, Life of Brian, Meaning of Life. They haven't said much about the meaning of life so far, have they? Of course, this one here. Boys again. More even than the film is this man, Mel Brooks, who's a big inspiration for what I was trying to do with Jojo Rabbit. There's people like Chaplin and Brooks and Lubitsch, and even like this one here. Uh, where did that come from? I don't know. They got some charm and that wooden sect, that heat and fate and hoot and fight and dot and hoot and sick. Hey! Soldiers for Hinkle! <laughs> I'd already seen these films before, and um, you know, and uh, I've always loved them, and always wanted to do something that you know had some humour and satire in it that was set around World War Two. But what I decided to do when I uh, when I, when I came to make the film, and even when I was writing it, I decided not to watch any of these films. So I guess in terms of me being influenced, yes, and inspired, definitely, but inspired by the people who made the films. So these two. 
This is why France is great. So, Jules and Jim, I've uh, stolen the opening of Jules and Jim. Enfin, malgré la vie de Jim, Jules prit contact avec des professionnels, mais sans y trouver satisfaction. Little moments with the montage of their history. And this one, of course. Regarde ton fils. Quel enfariné. Je t'assure, je n'ai pas envie de plaisanter. Ah, tiens, moi qui croyais justement. It was another big influence on Boy and even my very first short film, Two Cars, One Night. Hi. I'm your dad. Oh. Hey, dad. Hey. Welcome back. Uh, I did love, um, I don't know what the French word is, but it's um, intouchables. It was a little bit of an inspiration, and now they're getting a little bit of an influence on my football film, Next Goal Wins, which is, uh, if you come with me, I'll show you. And this is the uh, film I was just talking about. This is a documentary, Next Goal Wins, and I'm uh, adapting it with Michael Fassbender, Elizabeth Moss, and a bunch of um, friends of mine from New Zealand and, and a lot of really great Polynesian actors from around, from Hawaii and from mainland America and also from New Zealand and Australia. And um, it's about, um, this is like an ultimate underdog story of um, triumph of the will. this here, Alice doesn't live here anymore, so Scarlett Johansson's character in Jojo Rabbit, I based a lot on Alan Burstyn in this, in this film, because I think she's one of the great single mothers of, in cinema in that movie. Are we there yet? No one talks about this film when they talk about Martin Scorsese, they talk about Hugo. What's your name, boy? Hugo. But this is the one, and I think this is one of his greatest films, and I think that it's true what he was saying, that uh, he surrounded himself with a lot of women um, uh, for his heads of department and the crew and everything, because he didn't know anything about women, and so he wanted to try and understand them. This is England, Shane Meadows. Bam! Yes. If I see you on my streets again, I'll slash you. I just absolutely adored, and um, the only reason that this film, I think, is like it's really what it is, is because of this kid, one of the great pornos ever made. Oh God! Oh, let me out. With Anne Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, Catherine Ross is Mike Nichols, the graduate, and I would say it's, in, it's, it's consistently been in my top five films. Black Stallion. This is um, I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful film about a boy and a horse on an island. You can imagine what happens. What else can I find here? Oh, Big Trouble in Little China and Terminator 2. I'll talk about both these together. Kurt Russell is what makes American cinema great. <laughs> Never met him, but maybe I don't need to. They say don't meet your heroes. I don't think I need to meet him, but I want you guys to know this is the guy. One of the inspirations for Thor Ragnarok was this film, Big Trouble in Little China. And we loved that, just the fun uh, nature of that character, and that's something we wanted to try and emulate in Thor with Chris's character, Thor. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. This is another inspiration on Jojo Rabbit, a little boy and his imaginary friend. Here, fantastic selection. I mean, what a weekend. What a weekend at home. I mean, let's talk about them. Time Bandits, Terry Gilliam. Incredible film, very imaginative. Maybe I'm doing something with the, that property as a show. Who knows? Dracula. Most of the effects, if not all of them, were all in camera. Silhouettes, shadows, animatronics. Yeah, just old school, good old fashioned special effects. And it's a beautiful story. I don't know if you know about the story about Dracula, but she, he went to battle. She thought he was dead, so she jumped out a window. He got back too late. She was dead, so he blamed God. Bottle Rocket. The, the film that put him on the map. Punch Drunk Love. Um, let me demonstrate for you. 
Okay. This is probably, for me, Adam Sandler's great, great uh, film, his best role. Uncut Gems, though. Go through my look. Be careful. That's my best look. All right? I want you to look. He turned it on his head. He's incredible. And interestingly, you know, if you think about Paul Thomas Anderson, this is not the film that you'd, uh, you'd really consider to be his you know, his, his masterwork or what he's known for. What am I saying? I guess I'm saying that I like the things that are, that are, you know, not so obvious. Paper Moon. You owe me $85.74. Absolutely incredible. Also, father and daughter, Ryan O'Neill, Tatum O'Neill, and uh, she won an Oscar for this role in this uh, film. He didn't turn up to the ceremony. Jealous. Harold and Ward by the great Hal Ashby. And uh, it's what, it's, he's the, he is one of the top American filmmakers. What See everything he did. Do you find the idea of wife swapping distasteful? I even find the question distasteful. Do you enjoy. One of my favorite ones of his is. Uh, is actually the last detail. Like I was in a gas station and she was checking the oil. <laughs> well, Jack Nicholson. Not many people, you know, obviously people in cinema know about it, but it wouldn't be the one that people automatically go to. Also, the one they don't automatically go to is Coming Home. When I open my eyes, a few gone. The least Hal Ashby of all of his films, but it is the most beautiful. Coming from New Zealand, by order of the government, we must talk about Peter Jackson's movies all the time. And Heavenly Creatures is, um, I, in my personal opinion, um, I think is his greatest film. Mother! Oh, hello. Not to say it to take anything away from Lord of the Rings, all those trilogies, but this film, which also stars my very good friend Melanie Linsky here. This is one of the most inventive and incredible murder thrillers that I've ever seen. It's very suspenseful and very disturbing, but in a very cool way. Goodbye Pork Pie is a real New Zealand classic. I mean, it's a, it's a great, um, I want to say road trip film, but it's about a car trying to get from the top of the North Island of New Zealand to the very bottom and the cops are after them and it's a you know, one of those classic, like Smoking the Band and all those sort of car chase movies back in the 70s and 80s. It sort of it shares a lot with that. This one here, Badlands, this has inspired pretty much everything I've ever done. Okay. Now, can we just talk about Russell Crowe for a second because he is the greatest actor. Master and Commander is consistently makes my top 10 list. Why? Because of Russell Crowe. It's the way that he manages to take the audience and look after them just like he's looking after his crew. And you feel safe in his hands. You feel like you're being looked after. You feel like you're part of the crew and that you're really out there on that boat. And I think that's also a testament to Peter Weir's filmmaking skills as well. He really takes us on that journey and makes us feel that we're, we're actually there and that the stakes are high on the high seas. I mean, I think I've seen Gladiator and Master and Commander probably a hundred times. Gladiator, here it is here. Russell, 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 I love you. All right, well, that was it. Thanks so much for coming on the tour of this uh, store. The last of two remaining in the entire world. It's just to be here and touch all of these, and to touch all these cases that thousands and thousands of people have touched before me. Fingerprints, there's history in here. Now, I'm going to bid you adieu. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go wash my hands now.